I'm in a restaurant now. They're cooking the world famous Uzbek rice in big cauldrons. As you can see, the cook is mixing it. The Uzbek rice is really famous here. Uzbeks call it palav or ash. If it's without meat, you cannot call it Uzbek rice. If you come to Uzbekistan and don't eat Uzbek rice, you can't really say you've been to Uzbekistan. What makes the rice special and tasty is the fat in it. They add two pounds of fat into six pounds of rice. As you can see, it is just full of fat. They add animal fat to it as well. On top of that, they add six pounds of carrots and about six pounds of meat. You must add all of these together to make Uzbek rice. Otherwise, you can't really call it that. This is an Uzbek rice restaurant, and they're cooking this meal in these big cauldrons. Now let's see what else they add to it. I see they add chickpeas, carrots, meat, and let's see what else. Raisins and some spices such as cumin and black pepper can also be added to it. And they add garlic to it as well. They clean the garlic and add it to the rice to make it smell tasty. Now there are lots of customers waiting to eat this delicious rice. I guess they're also putting in eggs on the side of the plate. And he's adding the animal fat to it. Uzbeks mostly like to use animal fat. They say that without animal fat, it just won't be as tasty. And now I think it's time to serve. You can see that all the tables are occupied now. He has many customers, and they always have rice here. They serve one batch of rice, and right away, they start on the next for new customers. They work non-stop here, and they serve only the world-famous Uzbek rice. It looks actually pretty good. You know, I think I might actually have to try and taste some of this. Well, after talking so much about the Uzbek rice, I think I should taste it indeed. Thank you so much. Here we have our plate. As you can see, meat and animal fat are in the rice. That's how they serve it. They serve it with root tea, which is a type of green tea, and it comes with every meal. Here, have a look. Now, why green tea? Because it helps the stomach to relax and digest properly. And with a meal like this, I'm sure it will be a great help. Now, I hope this rice won't make me gain weight. What do you think, guys? You think it'll make me gain weight? Now, although it has a lot of fat in it, no, I don't believe for a second that it's going to make any of us gain any weight. I guess it's because of the green tea. It's very interesting. Now, I will try some real Uzbek rice. Mmm, it's really delicious. Come on, guys, go ahead. It's fatty, but tasty. Let me drink this green tea as well. Take a little sip of this. Uzbeks say that if you eat this rice once in your life, you will never forget its taste. According to them, this is the best rice in the world. And since there are so many rice-eating countries, that's quite a claim. You can only find this taste in Uzbekistan. We are now at the Independence Square metro station. It's very early in the morning. Trains come every three minutes, even during the early morning hours in Tashkent. The metro stations are very clean and in very good condition. They've decorated every train station like a palace. Approximately 300,000 people travel by this metro system every day. They have 29 underground stations. The total length of the metro system is 30 miles. 20% of the population use the metro system. We are now taking a short trip from the Independence Square metro station to the Alijir Navai station. Oh. 
Tashkent. It's almost like there's another world under the city of Tashkent. It becomes really crowded, especially during rush hours. <laughs> building belongs to the Ministry of Religious Affairs. It has a typical Central Asian architectural style. They're keeping a copy of the Quran, which the Caliph Osman, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, was reading when he was killed. It's being securely protected right here. This is one of the most famous areas in all of Tashkent. This group has come from Italy. They are very interested in seeing the Quran. Not only tourists, but also locals come here to see the Quran, and they are emptying the room, especially for Ebru TV. I'm now at the Islamic Library in Tashkent. The director of the library, Mr. Abedin, is next to me. The Quran is specially kept in a special box, and they have never opened this box for anyone before. I can see the Quran written on deerskin. Now this Quran is very special. They say that this Quran belonged to the Caliph Osman, and he was reading it when he was killed. Mr. Abedin will open it for Ebru TV so that we can see it. Now Mr. Abedin also tells us that there is bloodstains on the Quran, and he will open it only for Ebru TV. I thank him a lot for doing this. Here we go, and he is opening it very carefully. Now this Quran was written in Caliph Osman's time. As I've mentioned twice already, he was reading this Quran when he was killed. That's why this Quran is so special. Now as you can see, it's written on deerskin, which I've also mentioned before. Now tell us exactly, Mr. Abedin, how long have you had this Quran here? He's telling us that Amir Tumur brought this Quran from Basra. There are many stories as to how it actually came here. The fact that it was brought here by Timur is more realistic. It was kept in Divan Begi Dai Madrasa in Samarkand for a long time. When Russia invaded Central Asia in 1869, a Russian general took it to St. Petersburg. They gave it back in 1924. People from all over the world come here to visit this place and to see this very Quran. This Quran is the most valuable gift to us and a unique heritage. Keeping it in our city and protecting it is most honorable to us. They're keeping this Quran in a special place under a specific temperature. When they assassinated the Caliph Osman, his blood dropped on the 137th verse of the chapter Bakara. They've put a mark next to it. But I'm not touching it, this being the oldest copy of the Quran known to exist. The 137th verse says, God is enough for you against them. His blood dropped right on this verse. I can see the blood stains of the Caliph Osman on this page. What a remarkable opportunity for us to see this up close. <laughs> 